Welcome to Think Global, your source for in-depth analysis on global events. Today, we delve into the student protests in Bangladesh. I don't think people understand the depth of frustration that led to these massive protests. Bangladesh, a nation known for its vibrant culture and resilient people, found itself at a significant crossroads in June 2024. Thousands of students flooded the streets, their voices echoing with anger, frustration, and a deep sense of injustice. At the heart of their discontent lay a controversial government decision, the reinstatement of a quota system for government jobs. This system, designed to favor the descendants of 1971 liberation warfighters, struck a nerve with the younger generation, who felt marginalized and overlooked. The quota system was initially introduced to honor the sacrifices of those who fought for the country's independence. However, over the years it became a source of contention. We saw it as a slap in the face a system that rewarded lineage over merit, undermining our hard work and aspirations. For many of us, it symbolized a deeper rot within the nation's fabric, a system rigged against us, perpetuating inequality and favoritism. This isn't the first time students have risen against perceived injustices. In the past, student movements have played a crucial role in shaping the nation's political landscape. What began as a protest against an unfair quota system quickly morphed into something much bigger, a movement that resonated with a broader spectrum of societal issues. The students' anger spilled over, encompassing a multitude of grievances, rampant corruption, lack of opportunities, and the ever-increasing cost of living, which made daily survival a struggle for many. They demanded change, a complete overhaul of a system they felt had failed them, a system that needed to be rebuilt from the ground up. The government's initial response was lukewarm at best, offering no real solutions. Empty promises and minor concessions did little to quell the rising tide of anger and dissatisfaction. The students, fueled by a thirst for justice and armed with the power of social media, refused to back down, their resolve only growing stronger. The stage was set for a showdown, a clash that will determine the future direction of the nation. This is not just about the quota system, said one student leader, it's about our future, our right to a fair and just society. We will not be silenced. With determination and unity, the students continued to push forward, their movement gaining momentum with each passing day. July 2024 marked a turning point in the protests, a descent into chaos and violence. The government, feeling the pressure of the relentless student movement, chose the path of brute force. Security forces descended upon the protests, wielding batons and tear gas with brutal efficiency. The crackdown was swift and brutal, leaving a trail of injuries and deaths in its wake. Images of bloodied students and tear gas filled streets flooded social media, shocking the nation and galvanizing the protest movement. The government's attempt to crush dissent had backfired spectacularly. The narrative shifted from a struggle for equality to a fight for survival. The students, now marked as enemies of the state, found themselves facing an increasingly hostile and dangerous adversary. The crackdown, far from quelling the protests, had breathed new life into the movement, transforming it into a full-blown struggle for democracy and human rights. I saw them beating students mercilessly, said one eyewitness. It was like a war zone. Media reports highlighted the severity of the violence, with numerous accounts of students being hospitalized and some even losing their lives. We had no choice but to defend ourselves, said a student protester. They came at us with everything they had. The international community watched in horror with solidarity protests erupting in various parts of the world. The violence only served to strengthen the resolve of the students, uniting them in their fight for justice and democracy. August 5, 2024, will forever be etched in the memory of Bangladesh as a day of unspeakable horror. The day began with hope and determination as thousands of students gathered for a peaceful protest. By mid-morning the crowd had swelled and the atmosphere was charged with a sense of unity and purpose. Around noon, tensions began to rise as security forces arrived in large numbers. Eyewitness accounts described the sudden and brutal escalation. Tear gas was fired and chaos erupted. Amidst the pandemonium, students tried to help each other, setting up makeshift medical stations. I saw my friends fall around me, recalls Aisha, a 20-year-old student. We were just standing there chanting for our rights. By early afternoon, the violence had escalated further, with security forces using live ammunition. The death toll, a chilling testament to the brutality unleashed, climbed into the double digits. 
Bangladesh, a nation born from the ashes of a bloody struggle for independence, was once again stained with the blood of its own people. I lost my son that day, says Rahman, a grieving father. He was only 22, full of dreams and hopes. The aftermath of August 5th was a blur of grief, anger, and fear. The government, in a desperate attempt to control the narrative, imposed a strict curfew and crippled internet access. But the truth, like bloodstains on concrete, was impossible to erase. Images of the carnage smuggled out through whatever means possible, ignited a firestorm of international condemnation. Despite the terror, the student movement emerged more determined, vowing to continue their fight for justice. The government, mistaking silence for surrender, had grossly underestimated the resilience of the student movement. Despite the crackdown, the killings, the curfews, and the internet blackouts, the protests continued. Our spirit was unbroken. We found new ways to resist. We organized flash mobs, appearing and disappearing before the authorities could react. We communicated through clandestine networks, sharing information and coordinating our actions. The government's attempts to crush dissent only seemed to strengthen their resolve. The demands, once focused solely on the quota system, evolved to encompass a broader call for justice and accountability. They demanded an independent investigation into the deaths, the prosecution of those responsible, and an end to the culture of impunity that had allowed such atrocities to occur. The students, once dismissed as naive and idealistic, had become a powerful force for change, their voices echoing the hopes and aspirations of a nation yearning for a better future. We had to be creative. We used encrypted messaging apps to organize and share information. We held secret meetings and used social media to spread our message. Solidarity was key. We supported each other and made sure no one felt alone in this fight. We were a community, united by a common cause. Through their ingenuity and unwavering spirit, the students continued to challenge the status quo, inspiring a nation to dream of a better future. Section 5 the government's iron fist, curfews, blackouts, and accusations. Faced with a protest movement that refused to be silenced, the Bangladeshi government resorted to increasingly desperate and draconian measures, hoping to quell the rising tide of dissent. Strict curfews transformed bustling cities into ghost towns, internet blackouts severed the nation's digital lifeline, and the military patrolled the streets, their presence a constant reminder of the state's willingness to use force. The once vibrant urban centers were now eerily silent, a stark contrast to the chaos that had erupted just days before. The government, in a move ripped straight from the dictator's playbook, resorted to labeling the protesters as terrorists and enemies of the state. This was a calculated effort to delegitimize the movement and justify the harsh measures being taken. This cynical tactic, designed to demonize the movement and justify the crackdown, fooled no one. The people saw through the facade, recognizing the government's ploy for what it was, a desperate attempt to cling to power. The international community, appalled by the government's actions, saw through the charade, recognizing the protesters for what they were, ordinary citizens demanding their basic rights. Global leaders and human rights organizations condemned the government's heavy-handed approach. The government's actions, far from restoring order, only served to further inflame the situation. The more they tried to suppress the voices of dissent, the louder and more determined those voices became. The curfews, the blackouts, and the accusations only solidified the protesters' resolve, proving that they were indeed a threat to a regime that relied on fear and oppression to maintain its grip on power. The struggle for justice and freedom had only just begun, and the people's spirit remained unbroken. Political experts argue that the government's response is indicative of a regime in panic, resorting to extreme measures to maintain control. They suggest that such actions are likely to backfire, further galvanizing the protest movement. Human rights organizations have documented numerous abuses during the crackdown, including arbitrary arrests, excessive use of force, and violations of freedom of expression. They call for immediate international intervention to protect the rights of the protesters. The analysis from both political experts and human rights organizations underscores the gravity of the situation in Bangladesh, highlighting the urgent need for a
will not be easily quelled. The genie of dissent, once released, is not easily put back in the bottle. The voices of the people have been heard, and they demand change. The world will be watching closely to see what path Bangladesh chooses to take, one of healing and progress, or one of continued repression and instability. The eyes of the international community are fixed on this nation, waiting to see if it will rise to the challenge or falter under the weight of its own history. Experts suggest several potential scenarios. Dr. Ahmed, a political analyst, believes that if the government opts for reconciliation, it could lead to a period of healing and reform. However, he warns that continued repression could escalate tensions and lead to further unrest. On the other hand, Professor Rahman, a sociologist, predicts that the student movement could either splinter under pressure or grow stronger if they manage to maintain their unity and focus. The international community's response will also play a crucial role in shaping the outcome. The international community's stance could either bolster the protesters' resolve or embolden the government to take a harder line. The coming months will be critical in determining the trajectory of these protests and their impact on Bangladesh's future. Section 8. Sheikh Hasina's Reckoning. A leader on the brink. The student protests, with their shocking violence and relentless demands for change, have cast a long shadow over the once unassailable reign of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Her legacy, once defined by economic progress and relative stability, is now tainted by the blood of her own people. The international community, once content to overlook the Hasina government's authoritarian tendencies, is now voicing its displeasure. Foreign aid, a vital lifeline for Bangladesh's economy, is no longer guaranteed. Investors, wary of instability, are hesitant to commit their capital. The once bright economic picture is beginning to dim. Hasina, a shrewd political operator who has weathered many storms during her long tenure, now faces her greatest challenge yet. Can she regain control of the narrative, repair her tarnished image, and rebuild trust with a population that has lost faith in its leaders? Political analysts suggest that the ongoing unrest could lead to significant political reforms or even a change in leadership. Opposition leaders argue that the time has come for new leadership to guide Bangladesh through these turbulent times. Or will she, like so many autocrats before her, fall victim to the very forces of discontent she herself helped to unleash? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching Think Global. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on global issues.